I don't have time to edit down this video because I'm just over it. But I want to say, one, everyone needs to keep their hands to themselves. Two, don't pop off if you don't want to get popped. And three, to Robin and Giselle, y'all are some of the most judgmental, evil-spirited, want to be down, think that y'all are perfect people that I've ever seen, and y'all just need to go sit down some because y'all are just horrible people. Okay, go ahead. Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. Honey, this whole episode got on my nerve. Giselle, Wendy, and Robin got on my nerve to the highest point of pissivity all around these streets. Y'all already know, like, comment, subscribe. I don't even care to that. This whole episode, which was an hour, was just two things, okay? It was what Candace said, and it's what Monique said, okay? So, I'm going to get on into it. I feel like it's not even a play-by-play -play type of episode. It was just... <sighs> Giselle is the most hypocritical, fake, phony, floozy, non-dressing, non-designer, being able to design our damn house person that I've ever seen like she really the girl mm, girl with that cheating to Jamal Brown of girl she really was on here acting as if uh, I'm just I'm better than all of this I right, girl yo yo you not you not but let's just get into it we see Candace at home in a robe, cleaning her table. I just can't believe. I'm still in shock. I can't believe. I don't know how I got into this fight. You got into this fight, Candace, because of your mouth. Does that mean that Monique was right? No, it is not. Okay, I've said it time and time. And I'm so, I'm so sick and tired of people in my comment section who are upset that I can see two sides of a coin. There are two sides of a coin. Okay, and I feel like even though Monique had no right to put her hand on Candace, Candace still did think that she she wrote a check her ass couldn't cash. Okay, and that's what happened. So you kept fucking with Monique when Monique was already set up. Monique was looking for a reason to beat her ass, but at the same time, don't give her one. You knew y'all wasn't cool or whatever, but I'm going to leave that be. But she at home still in shock about what happened. I get it because no one wants to be in a fight for no reason. But you also can't be out here thinking you can say and do whatever. And someone may not put their hands on you. Again, it doesn't make it right, but reality is reality. We can't act like what happened didn't happen. Even if we feel like Monique shouldn't have done it, what happened happened. Candace talked cash shit and Monique had the check. And with no money in Candace's bank, okay? We then see Monique, you know, admitting that she needs to talk to the ladies. And she wants to meet up because she can't really remember everything that happened verbatim. So she wants to ask the ladies because they saw what happened. So she calls Karen. And, you know, as Karen to have all, if, if she can, you know, set up something for all the women to come over. To chit chat, you know, everyone except Candace and Karen says, Yes, I think it's a good idea. You know, what I'm saying we do need to talk now. We see each woman, you know, we see Robin saying, You know, I feel like Monique always makes excuses and she's going to think their thing's okay. We see Giselle saying, You know, to, to her daughters, if Monique can't um, say how she's going to keep apologizing to Candace and if she won't, um. If she can't say she won't do it again, then I don't want to be around her. Girl, whatever. And then Wendy's, you know, Wendy's saying what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. Wendy, 
you ain't even been on enough episodes to be on my nerves, but you got on my nerves today, okay, all up and through. Now, we do see Karen calls Candace, let Candace know that, you know, everyone's meeting up to chit-chat or whatever, and she wants, she's doing this for Monique, and she wants to offer the same thing to Candace, okay, for Candace to speak her piece to the ladies, and Candace is, is already upset. Oh, well, you know, that isn't that nice for you to, you know, allow her that, you know, or whatever you're saying. But I have already spoke to the ladies that were not, you know what I'm saying? And we already know that Monique, you know what I'm saying, is dangerous. She's unpredictable. You know, everyone saw how she acted and what happened. So, you know, I'm going to whatever. And, you know, it doesn't sit well with me that you are giving Monique so much grace to do this. And I like how Karen said, well, that's me. I'm grace under fire. Okay. Meaning... Candace wants people to blindly pick her side as if they all not friends. You know what I'm saying? And to me, Karen is the only one being neutral and saying they both played a part in this. And I can say that from a person who was there. Karen was there the whole time. She is witness. They they back and forth. So for Karen to say they both was at fault. It's not all Candace it's, and it's not all Monique. Was Monique wrong for putting hands on Candace? Yes, but they both played a part in this. That's actual and factual. But I'm going to leave that being with now. Okay, so two things is going on. We got the ladies meeting up at Karen's house. And then Candace is at her therapist's house. Candace is at her therapy house. I'm going to do this real quick. Um, with doc- is it Dr. Ken? It's whoever she went to see with her mama last season. You know what I'm saying? Dr. Ken, like, okay, so what happened? Two things is happening with Candace. One, she is not fully taking account of anything she did to play a part in the role of her and Monique falling out. Not the fight. Not the fight. But both Candace and Monique have played their own parts in the demise of their friendship. Candace kept acting as if I have no idea what I did to her to make us get to this to make it get this bad. There was little things that kept happening that y'all both kept ignoring and pushing up under the rug to where it exploded. That's what happened, but to make it seem as if I have no idea what I did, you may not have done anything to warrant being hit. That I can agree with. However, you're not innocent and you're not a victim you got into a fight okay you cannot be in a verbal argument with anybody and then think it may not come to blows because at times in life when you are fussing with someone it could always possibly come to blows because you never know what the other person is thinking or what they're going through we have to remember that we are all i like that monique kept saying we are all human meaning at times we make mistakes and as long as you are not a person who keeps making that same mistake, people should not pigeonhole you to that one thing. And so I feel like Candace needed to learn the lesson of I can't always run my mouth and not get popped in it. Because sometimes you get popped and getting popped don't mean it's right. But sometimes you get popped and whatnot. So the doctor did ask her, well, do you think you played any role, not in the physical part of the fight, but any role leading up to it? And she kept saying no. So the most I'll say is last year, yes, you know what I'm saying? I was acting a little, you know what I'm saying? Seen too much. But this year I came and I did things differently. But my thing is, y'all still had shift, shit left over from last year. Plus the new shit there, the new shit this year that Giselle ass was up here uh, instigating. <sighs> anyway, so we had that conversation with her at the lawyer's office, and the, lawyer, the doctor's office. And the doctor asked her, what the therapist uh, asked her, um... Could you see yourself forgiving her one day? And she said, maybe with time. You Maybe with time. But right now, I don't have anything to say to Monique. She has every reason not to want to say anything. But we knew she said that because at this point, she's trying to sue her. Okay, so that's all we heard from Candace. Okay, now on to the house of Karen. You know, okay, when we have everybody showing up. Now we see the lady showing up at her house or whatever. Giselle, bad fashion ass showed up with security she showed up with a whole security guard for no damn reason now karen and rob are like why the fuck does she have security like what what? because i'm not gonna be here and i i I am for jamal is a pastor and i cannot be in the news for you know i'm like bitch no one care about you or jamal okay except all his kids mothers okay but i'm gonna leave that be now as he shows up 
with baby Dean because she cannot find a sitter that quick. And then, you know, Wendy gets there. Now, Karen explains to all of them this is a safe space, a safe conversation space for Monique to tell her side and for also for y'all to say y'all peace as well. Wendy then said, well, I want to bring up, you know what I'm saying, I want to discuss how the news got to the blog. So we then see a story of, you know, the fight or whatever. Now, um, Robin then said, well, clearly, clearly it was Monique who leaked because the storyline is kind of one-sided. We see one little clip that says, you know, uh, it must be Monique because the story said, um, fight breaks out, you know, between Monique and Candace or whatever, and Candace you know, hit Monique with a glass and then Monique responded. So that do sound like it came from Monique. But however, I'm like, it was other people there. Like, do y'all, we seen a clip of the footage because it leaked. Okay, because someone was recorded from the side or whatnot. But I'm going to leave that be. And they say how it, it didn't leak like right after. It leaked a couple of days later. So, uh, Wendy then say something like, um... When you put your hands on someone, okay, that's a way they say that all black women be fighting. I'm looking like, why do y'all keep, you know who put the strip? It's us that do that, okay? The fact that they keep saying, oh, this is a bad look for black women. This is, we can't, white folk be fussing, fighting, fooling around all the time on Bravo. There have been fights of every race, black, white, Indian, Chinese, Japanese, Italian, whatever, all of the above, okay? Let's not act like we did not see Teresa flip a goddamn table on Jersey. We seen on the Housewives of New York, someone yanked someone's hair, okay? Two white women of Italian descent. So we can't act as if only the black people on the black show be fighting. No, it's on all reality shows. There has been some kind of fight or altercation on all shows, whatever. Don't, <laughs> my nose is in there. So it, it angers me that black women try to down talk black women for making a mistake. If Monique was a person who was out here fussing and fighting every season all the time, then yes, call it what it is. She's a fighting ass angry black woman, but she isn't. Okay, she is not. She made a bad situation <laughs> on public television or whatever or national whatever but don't make it seem as if she speaks for all black women and I like how Karen put on her Twitter the women of the housewives of the Potomac only represents themselves we as black women we all wear our own crown okay we ain't here we are not a spokesperson for all black women it kills me and pisses me off when black women likes to just degrade other people for making a fucking mistake. We don't degrade. Is it degrade? It's degrade. We don't speak down on what these badass wigs. Like we don't do that. We don't speak down on Giselle's everything. Okay, everything. And I feel like they were looking for a reason to just beat down on Monique. And she gave it to them. She gave them every opening to do this to her by her fucking up and fighting Candace. So I'm going to leave that be. And now let's be clear. Giselle then says, you know, we have always been above board. You know what I'm saying? And with five minutes, Monique has taken it all away. Giselle, you are a former first lady of a disgraced ass pastor who has six or seven baby mamas. You were never above board of shit. All you was above board was you was the first person to have Jamal kids. You are just as low down and dirty as anyone else. And if you didn't make it seem as if you are above board. You are bullshit. Okay girl miss me with the bull of the shit. You are a jealous evil ass sneaky ass woman who likes to bring other people down you are never was could be should be above board bitch okay and now let's move on now robin brings up how it's a bad role model for black women and for her children you know monica said i'm like bitch did you you've been fucking around with wine all this goddamn time without being married you are a bad uh experience 
I'm trying not to do what I want to do and just go in on them all. I, Robin, and I'm closing my eyes so I can see the words not to say. Robin and Giselle are bad black women because they like to talk as if they are the best of the best and anything that anyone else does looks bad. Both Giselle and Robin was on season, I believe season two or season three, and they were at uh, uh, Athens restaurant and Robin was in Assy's face saying that she would drag Assy. Giselle then said she would drag you, uh, Assy. So I'm like, when do when uh, uh, y'all are bad? Y'all are just bad people. To black women, to white women, to tall women, to short women, to fat women, to skinny women, to men, to dogs, to frogs, to whatever. Okay, because y'all are fucking hypocrites. Okay, you're fucking hypocrites and kiss my goddamn ass. Okay, because I'm like, Robin and Giselle, shut the fuck up. Just shut up. They are really looking for reasons to just make it seem as if Monique was out here stabbing and, and raping and plund and this plund plundering and plundering all through the city when all she did was had a fight with a bitch she don't like. We have seen that happen on tons of reality shows. We have seen people make mistakes all around the world. My thing is this. There is one thing that you can't come back from. That's murder. That's the only thing you cannot take back. Anything else you do ain't permanent. Okay? Fighting someone can be rectified. You can make amends and make apologies for it and change your behavior and, con and control yourself. So the fact... That they're trying to make it seem as if she's an unredeemable person pisses me off. I have gotten in fights before. Okay, I have. And I'm only 38. I, not in my 30s, but, but again. But again, to make it seem like Monique is this horrible person is aggravating. It's belittling. It's bullshit, okay? So, Ashley brings up, like, you know, do we hold men to these same standards? Like, why y'all keep bringing up black, like, black women? Why is it only the women who has to have this perfect way of living? We can't make no mistakes or nothing. And we ain't talking about men. This is about black women. This is about her being a bad example. They want to keep it to Monique. Girl, the fuck by. We can see that basically Wendy, uh, Giselle, and Robin have already made their masks up. And they just want to paint Monique picture of bad black woman. Bad example. Bad, bad, bad. Fuck you, fuck you, and fuck you. Okay? Now... We then see Monique gets there. Okay, she gets there, whatever. And look. Again, Giselle, Robin, and Wendy did not believe her. They were not going to believe her. The only thing Monique could have came in and did that would have made all of them feel justified and forgiven her would be if she would have came and said, Robin. Just say, Wendy, I'm so, so can y'all please, please, I'm begging you to forgive me. I'm so, she would have had to beg and plead them to even acknowledge that she was uh, asking for forgiveness. Monique came in and was honest. I don't remember everything. I'm not remorseful yet. This is the part I remember. I am ashamed. I am embarrassed of the way I acted. You know what I'm saying? I should have never let anyone get up under my skin like that. You know, I apologize for my actions and me putting y'all in harm's way. Now, do I think it could happen again? I don't know. Because we're all human. And anything can happen. Anybody at any time could get pissed and lose their cool. Okay? But what I do know is I'm trying to be better. Now, Giselle, old punk ass, let me take notes. Monique like, all right. Be on your high horse or whatever. It's fine. I don't really care. But no, I'm not going to be a person. It was bullshit or whatever. So, um, Monique also said, I'm not a person who would just assault someone for no reason. Let's be clear. Monique and Candace were in a verbal altercation at the time. And Monique lost it and put her hands on Candace, which she should not have. But shit happens. Don't get in my face if you don't want to get popped. 
If we fussing, fuss for me out of my arm's reach. Because if you're in my arm's reach, if I feel threatened, I'm going to protect myself. As a person who was raised to defend yourself, you're also taught that if you feel like someone is going to attack you, you sometimes attack first. If you feel that way, and because of the hands and the back and the foot, whatever, that's what happened. And even, let me, let me, uh, let me mention, Candace in her therapy session said, Monique and me were fussing, you know, she lied and said my hand was on her face, but whatever. But she do say I was entertaining the bullshit of it all. And she flicked my hair. And when she was flicking my hair, I did reach across the table and I did flick her her uh, shirt or whatever. The same time that she did that, that's when the swinging started. So, again, they both did shit. Okay, let's make that clear. But, you know, Monique was like, you know, for me, I remember her in my face asking me to drag her. I felt a glass in my face, and that's when I started swinging. Technically, that's what happened. Technically, it is. Um, she never said she didn't flick her hair first. She never said they wasn't fussing first. Her point was, once the glass and the, and the wine was in my face, that's when I started swinging. And that was true. Monique wasn't swinging at first. At first, Monique just had her hair, and that was it, which is bad enough. But I digress. I'm going to leave that be. But... Wendy and Robin and Dazil kept making it seem as if you're a liar. That isn't true. Girl, it just made me it just made me mad. Um again, we see the back and forth of it all. You know, we do see one part where uh, Monique say like I can't remember what exactly happened. I do remember, you know, because I kind of blacked out. Um I remember a producer said to me, let go. Um we see the footage of her riding home and she's saying, Well, yeah, I remember that I Grabs her by her hair. I bop, bop, bop. Y'all grab my hand. I use the other hand. Bop, bop, bop. You know, I remember the glass being in my face. She's saying the same things. And I don't think people, maybe people who have not been in a fight don't realize you're not watching the fight from outside of your body. It's easy to say from over there what happened because you have a full view if i'm just right here i can't see what's over there i can't see what's over here i'm looking at you bitch at you so it's it's not uncommon for people in a fight to not know all the things that was happening around them all they know know is what was in the front of their face but let me leave that there um because they're trying to make it seem as if monique was lying about what she saw what her account was you have robin and Wendy saying, well, no, this is what happened. Right. That was her point of having y'all here because I can't remember what fully happened. Y'all can. So tell me what happened. And Monique was even open to listening to them. But because they were basically being bitches about it, she was like, oh, oh okay. Because they were, they came there with they mind made up. Now, again, she said out her own mouth, you know, I remember, you know, she said nothing I can say is an excuse for what I did. But what I can say is after the glass was on my face. It went downhill from there. And it did. It got worse at that point. Robin. That's not true. You know, that's a whole lot. You had me. But you lying. You know Candace did not throw the wine first. She said you had. She said you had wine on your face. Because of the fight. Stuff from off the table flew up. You was a goddamn lie Robin. That wine was tossed. In Monique's face. Monique was not covered in red wine. She was covered in white wine. And that's the thing too. Robin saw things from her perspective over here. But Wendy, who was on this side, it was just, girl. <sighs> Nothing Monique could have said while all of them pack rats, meaning Wendy, Robin, and just that was sitting there. Nothing that Monique would have said besides, please forgive me, sir. I'm so sorry, boss. Would would have would have sufficed. Um, Robin then bring up and you leaked the story to the blog and Monique said I did not do that. I did tell someone a couple of days after the fact what happened, and you know, but I told someone I knew about it. You know what I'm saying? Well, see that mean that's how it leaked. I can't control if I tell someone some shit. Again, nothing that Monique could have said would have made them see her point in saying. To this day, I'm still riled up about it. I'm still trying to piece stuff together. I'm still trying to figure shit out. 
what she, the only thing she said was that as of right now, I'm not remorseful. As of right now, I don't feel like I owe Candace an apology as of right now. But I am embarrassed. I am, you know, sorry about what I did, like about my actions. But I'm not, you know, but that's it. We can't expect much more than that from anybody because you do need to give people a time to figure out their feelings so many times we expect people to instantly feel some kind of way i feel like you can't feel things instantly all the time because sometimes you're only doing that to make other people happy you have to get in your own mind and your own psyche and realize why did i do that what happened damn that was fucked up now that i think about it you know what i'm saying that doesn't make a person a bad person to take time to figure shit out. Let her figure shit out. And she was on Watch What Happens Live. And she said, like, people fail to realize I have three kids. I have a husband. I could not go home and sit and chit-chat on the floor. On, on the floor. I could not go home and chit-chat and drink coffee with my husband because I have other things to do. Me and Candace had the luxury of going home and not having to take care of anyone else. She didn't. She said, I got home and I went into mommy mode because I have kids and I still had not had time to process what happened. And I feel like I can get that. Candace had more time to figure out her feelings. That's how she knew how she felt. Monique didn't do that instantly. She didn't do that until like recently. She, even now, she said on um, Watch What Happened Live that she know now that she is sorry. To, she wants to say sorry to Candace and she know how wrong she was. It just took her a longer a longer time to get to that feeling. I don't see nothing wrong with that. I don't. People like to judge people. People like to put their own thoughts and opinions on other people. I'm a person where I like seeing both sides. I see how Candace thinks seeing things happen. I see how Monique seeing things happen. They both see things two different ways. They both feel like... I think Candace Moore feels like she is completely innocent. Whereas Monique knows she was wrong. But she also said we have to address people who be in your face and, you know, antagonize you. You know, and just want to keep popping off. And they think they can do that with no actions happening. Sometimes that's not true. And, you know, that isn't an excuse or a, oh, it's okay thing. It's a, it's a fact. I personally would never go and be fussing in anyone's face and I can assume well they can't do nothing to me they can't touch me they might so I don't put myself in situations I'm not ready for if I'm in your face fussing I'm prepared to beat that ass I'm prepared to fight you if I have to I'm not gonna fight you myself but if it comes to that I'm ready Candace wrote a check her ass could not cash because she didn't want to fight she did not, but you went to a fight holding a pillow and got mad when you got hit with a chair. It was what it was. You know, we then see, you know, Robin and Winnie and Giselle just telling her how wrong she was or whatever. I don't really care. You know, as he feel like, you know, look, I feel like, you know, I wasn't there, but, you know, from the pieces I got from everybody, what you did was wrong. Period. Okay, but the way that you have taken a color taking accountability for it, you know what I'm saying, and you know that the action you did was wrong, I can only see how you act going forward because you're not a person who has a streak of violence. So I'm not really worried about you consistently fighting, but you still have to address what you did, okay? Giselle then gets on her soapbox, honey. Well, me, you know, I, you know, since your first season, you said that you would punch me in the face. And I'm like, no. And her confessional, she said, Giselle, or no, she said, she's, she said, um, you are one step away from getting your face punched in. She did not say that to Giselle. She said it about Giselle. She then said in the following season, you and Robin had the umbrella situation. What they did not show was Robin walked up to Monique in an aggressive tone and Monique matched her energy. You can't blame Monique. When I saw the footage, I posted it on my IG last week. Robin walked up. What you gonna do, Monique? What you gonna do, Monique? And Monique said, I will strangle you with this goddamn umbrella. My thing is, you are you are playing like half a shit. You're not playing, girl. I just... <sighs> she said, then last year, 
you threatened to drag Candace, and then two weeks ago you dragged her. S- yeah. Yeah. She then said, you know, I told my kids, you know, what you did to my kids said, you know, that I should not be around you. And Monique said, well, if I was your kids and I heard the, the version that you said, I would probably say the same thing. Then Winnie and Robin, Monique, that is, you're being rude. You're being condescending. Karen, get her. Get her. You're the media. I'm like, bitch, girl, get her. Y'all don't even get how I'm trying not to fully cuss them out with their act antics and their the, the bullshit of it all. You know, and Karen said, like, let me be clear. I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to let her speak because that's why she's here. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to say to Monique, you know, what you did was fucked up. Yes, you fucked up. Period. You get these women have attacked me time and time again, but I have never put my hands on them. I'm here to support you, but you have to address your actions, okay? And my thing is, Karen did the right thing. She is making Monique be accountable, but she's not trying to break her as if she is a horrible person. And that's what pisses me off that they are trying to make Monique be this horrible, violent person person she ain't caning <laughs> power she isn't you know what i'm saying and monique's like i'm gonna go talk to my pastor um, i'm gonna get some count i'm gonna get some try to get some help to figure out how i got to this point now at this point in time monique is you know over it giselle then gets up like i don't want to be anywhere near you and they say okay well, you can leave that's fine okay you can go and she leaves with her security i have a uh me and Jamal have an image to protect. You know, he's a pastor. We could not be around people fighting. He was a cheating pastor. He has seven baby mamas. Okay, we have not even... We... Giselle, any image that you and Jamal had was ruined when you told everybody that he was out here putting his dick in everybody he could and get people knocked up. You ruined your image. That book you wrote, you wrote, you wrote, Ruined your image. You cannot blame anybody for your image being fucked up besides you and Big Dick. Big Dick. <laughs> Cause I don't know if it's big. But, you know, Dick spreading as Jamal, okay? Miss me with the bullshit. At the end of the day, I don't care about nothing else they were saying. You know, they kept just coming out on Monique. And to me, it was bullshit. Karen and Athy are on Monique's side showing support to her, not telling her she's right there, telling her she was wrong, but they're just not demeaning her. And you got Robin, Wendy, and Giselle on a we don't believe her, she lying, you know, she's a bad person, whatever. You know, use your words. I don't get no fucks, okay? Fuck Wendy, fuck Jamal, fuck Robin, fuck Giselle, all of that because I it's bullshit. I can't. <sighs> And I'm not mad. Like, I'm going to get off this camera and I'm going to be fine. But I just don't like it when people try to play perfect. And I feel like Wendy and Giselle and Robin are trying to play perfect. And I just don't fuck with them. And I'm going to leave it at that. I'm I forgot. I'll add in. <laughs> um, Monique did say that she would be taking a break because who she has become on the show isn't who she is and she has to get a count of herself to figure out why she snapped and so she said she's gonna take a little break so and she ain't leaving you know what i'm saying but uh yeah and that's it okay um but yeah i'm done for right now i'm done peace